times are on my vintage i5 videos. Today I'm going to be talking about turntables. Should have brought the subjects up maybe a bit earlier amongst all my videos. Uh, reason being, it's kind of jogged me memory and made me do one because I bought yet another, well I say yet another, this is the second one I've got now. Uh, second hand turntable, very cheaply I think. Um, ain't a bargain bargain, but you know, it's cheap enough for what it is. And just want to give you my thoughts and uh, maybe what to look out for, maybe you know, um, kind of choices you've got on second hand turbos, as, as well as new ones as well, different arms, different cartridges, uh, all different things really. Uh, then I will review this turntable in another video later on, and also the other turntable I've got downstairs, which has had quite a long time now, my um, main turntable really. But this, you know, this is just a, uh, it was the bottom of the range at the time, but um, it's still not a nice little turntable to get into your vinyl with. Anyway, I'm going to go over quite a few different things here. Um, my faults, and maybe like I'm going to miss a few bits out, I don't know. Uh, maybe you can leave in the comments anything I've missed out, and uh, may help other people looking for turntables, etc. Uh, first, yeah, uh, we'll talk about the um, new and second hand ones right at the end, because it's on the end of this list, but I'm just going to go first of all, it's like I say, it's in no particular order, it doesn't really matter because it's all connected to the turntable one way or the other. We're going to start off with actually cartridges, so we're going to start off probably with the smallest part of the turntable. Um, cartridges here, now you've got a few to choose from here. Um, you know, there's ceramic, there's a moving magnet and a moving coal cartridge. Uh, so I'm just going to briefly talk about them. They obviously, go on the internet and maybe delve in a bit more. Maybe what will suit you uh, to your pocket and to, you know how you want to use the turntable and etc. But um, we'll start off with ceramic, and these ceramic cartridges was like used quite a long time ago, and like these old-fashioned metal players these used to play 78s etc. and all that. Yeah. By the way, I'm just going to concentrate on 33 and 45. This is what we're going to use. The turntables, you know, this is the kind of turntable we're looking for now. Yeah, so these were um, these these ceramic cartridges was a, was a cheap cartridge. I mean, they're not expensive to buy these days. You you can pick up one for about eight or nine pound, and to replace the stylus probably three or four pound. It is that cheap. Uh, these these are quite an eye output cartridge, and these cartridge um, you can probably plug straight into uh, the back of your amplifier. Uh, some of them have got a moving magnet. Um, and ceramic on, on the back a little switch and that but most of them you're probably going to get away with just plugging into your auxiliary output because they've got quite an, uh, an eye output um, the advantage is that they, these are not really used so much maybe for um, DJ sorry DJ decks these days where they do a lot of scratching backwards and forwards of the record because that, that this ceramic cartridge has got more of a downforce uh, so it, it you know grips the record better so to speak when you're scratching the record so a lot of DJs kind of use these kind of uh, styluses like I say they've got more downforce obviously the more downforce is going to wear your record out a bit quicker uh, they sound okay you know, you know nothing wrong with the sound you know it's still you know it's okay it's not not like you know the highest quality but it's okay the sound um, these are on older units you know you get these Crosby uh, you know this record power on four legs or the old one with a cut you know the old wooden one they used to have years ago like in the 60s and that ever and they're quite popular these days these uh, Crosby record players I think a lot of people reminiscing and a lot of people not really into hi-fi and, and it still stands okay to them with a speaker at the front or whatever that sounds fantastic you know I mean, that's, that's all they want they've got an old rec record collection probably got you know some most of it was got scratches and that and them scratches probably won't you know show up so much on that ceramic needle uh, so you know it all sounds nice and fine to them um, yeah, let's, let's crack on pop maybe with them if you've got like a more finer needle, going to show up the imperfections of the record more. Uh, treble can be lacking in them uh, with this ceramic cartridge, the treble can be a bit lacking, that's a, another downside. Um, yeah, so that's it really, so you know that kind of covers it, it's a cheap um, stylus uh, cartridge that maybe, like I say, it's not, every, you know, it's not everyone's going to use that really, but it, 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 that's what it is like, and uh, like I say, maybe for DJs these days, and th these people like, you know, they kind of flick over, don't they? Remember the old, you pay 33s and 45s, and you have to flick the needle over, and that'll be your 78, so that'll be your, your ceramic uh, cartridge um, kind of wrapped up there, really. So we, we'll move on to moving magnet next. This is obviously the, the most popular cartridge. Uh, and this is probably, you know, this is going to be the cartridge for us, so to speak, on this channel. Uh, because, the, well, I'll go on to the moving call in a minute, but this is the kind of cartridge, it's in our price range, start from about £20. Uh, it's got a lower output, so it's got a lower output, so you will need an amplifier or receiver that's got uh, a moving magnet or, you know, especially dedicated phono that will take this cartridge. Um, 
or you can buy yourself a preamp, you get a little preamp that, that would, you know, if you were amplify and got that, you, you can get yourself a little preamp to do that. Now this, the, the ceramic cartridge is quite robust. It's quite a stiff cut, um, a stylish, I say, on the ceramic. It's quite, it's quite robust. It's, you know, any movement outside, it kind of absorbs, you know, it's, it's quite solid. With this um, moving magnet one, it's a, it's a more finer stylus. It's not so robust as a ceramic one. Uh, it sounds better than the ceramic one. In most, in most cases, obviously, not, it's a really cheap one, I'm saying. But yeah, you know, generally it should sound better or a lot better. It's most common on, on record players these days. Like, you know, that's the kind of one, that, or turntables, that's the kind of one you're going to find. Like I say, may need a preamp. Um, uh, and, and the price range is like in, in our price range, I would say, or for my price range anyway. Um, this channel, like I say, is you know, really dedicated for um, for low end at the moment. We're starting low end. We're building up. We're building up. Hopefully, like, a few of us are build up. I mean, obviously, people coming over and seeing, you know, it's got all expensive gear, Macintosh and all big mates there for them. think, you know, this, this is not for me, and it probably ain't. But anyway, um, so um, yeah, it's, it's, it's our kind of price range, ranging from about twenty pound upwards, like you know, four or five, depending on how much you want to spend. But realistically, you know, you're probably going to spend thirty or forty pounds somewhere around there, I suppose. I'm guessing a bit, you know, it's, it's to your taste. Uh, but this is this is the kind of stylus that most people kind of use. Then we got uh, sorry, sorry, stylus stroke uh, cartridge. Then we're moving to moving coil. Now this is an, it's quite an expensive uh, cartridge, quite delicate as well. Um, it sounds better, you know, arguably it sounds better than moving magnet. Uh, it, can, it can get more detail out of the record. You, the trouble with this, it gives such a low output that you're probably going to need uh, an head amp. It's called an head amp, another like kind of preamplified head amp or a, a step up transformer to get the volume up. Um, you can get high output ones, so well, you wouldn't need that. You can plug it into a moving magnet. There, there are then ones about. Just a very little story about these. Many years ago, about 25 years ago, when I had a record player. And uh, I could, they weren't really that expensive then. They kind of seem to shop a little bit these days compared to what, what, what I bought my one for. Maybe I just got a bottom of the range one or whatever. But um, yeah, I had one and I used to keep it just for special you know, records that are like mint condition. I didn't want to wear it out, all that kind of thing. And taught me a lesson really. Like, you know, then I always put things aside. I want to keep for certain things. And it conked out. One of the channels went and I literally only had a few hours play out of it. But the thing is, it was the guarantee had run out because I played it so, so few times the year's guarantee had run out, so that was the end of it. So I lost one channel. Now, a friend of mine who's got a Riga set up, Splendor uh, D7 speakers, I think, spent quite a lot of money. His cartridge is a thousand pounds, and to get this stylus, this is a moving uh, coil one, and to get the uh, stylus, re they re tip it. Uh, that cost him about another five or six hundred pounds to get it re tipped anyway. It was only a little while after we had this that the same thing happened to him. That cartridge, one of the channels went there, you know, just maybe just one of those things. But yeah, they're quite a delicate cartridge, I would have said, like you with me. So um, yeah, and it taught me a lesson maybe to, to use things as they are. Don't hold them back. And uh, when you can't use it, it don't work. Uh, best, to, best to use it now, so to speak. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't think that's really for us. You know, it's not for me. It's not for us. And I don't think anyone, you know, no disrespect to anything. No, watching the channel is going to go out and buy a four or five hundred pound uh, moving coal cartridge to put on a cheap record player that, that like I say, with the kind of ballpark we're in at the moment, uh, and buy, um, like I say, a transformer to step it up. It's going to cost you too much. So, you know, it's not for us. So we're, we're going to stick with a moving magnet. So that's that's kind of like where I am with a cartridge, and probably like a recommended cartridge there is the moving magnet one. Okay, so now we're going to come um, direct drive. Uh, this is how the motors did the actual. Um, Records spun round the platter, it's actually spun round direct drive or belt drive. Now, you know, it's, it's, an, it's, it's obviously an argument for all these cartridges, an argument for direct drive and uh, belt drive, you know, which is the better, which one should I choose, so to speak. Um, but the way, you know, the way I look at it, uh, both my turntables are, well, I need just acquire this, but both my turntables are a uh, belt drive. Uh, got their disadvantages and advantages. So if we go with direct drive first, the direct drive, the actual the platter is actually like. The motor's dead underneath, dead centre, and it's like, you know, the, the actual platter's actually bolted dead onto it. So, you know, as the motor spins, this will spin at exactly the same time, just an extension of the motor, basically. So, it will start up faster. It's got an eye torque, so when you press play or whatever you're going to do on your record player, wherever you get it going, move the, the uh, arm across or whatever, it's going to be quick and quick and start up fast. You know, DJs use these and whatever for a quick start up and whatever. I don't want to record, ooh, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Um... But it's not really going to bother us so much because if you've got a belt drive one, you just got to wait for the speed and then take it over. Or if it's a semi or automatic one, it, it'd be the right speed by the time the, the needle hits the record. But that's kind of the advantages of a direct drive. It will start up faster. 
uh, you, can, you can put a little bit more force on it as well because um, it's, it's quite strong you know it's got I talk, it's quite a strong motor it, you can put more force on it if you want to so that's another um, another beneficial like it's going to stay at a constant speed which it should do it should stay at a constant you know, that, that speed should be accurate and constant you know all the time you know it's directly connect, connected up to the motor um, a few little problems with it it can um, depending like obviously the quality wise and whatever um, how that motor is actually you know situated in in the plinth like with dampening like with rubber feet or whatever how it's actually attached um, and also as you know how dead straight the plat has been put onto it you know our dead center you know everything critical here really critical uh, because it can cause a vibration even the motor vibrating itself but it can cause vibrations is, is not a lot of dampening really going to go on to help that vibrations obviously there is with bits and pieces but it's more prone to uh, get a bit more vibrations which obviously your tone arm and stylus will pick up um yeah so yeah you know it depends on the bearings and all that you know it's a lot lot dependent on that so to speak and also um just reading my notes here it's a bit more vulnerable to outside forces because it's got a little bit less dampening than say a belt drive one where the rubber belt would dampen it a bit more so uh, you know not that they're going to go along and start smashing into things but it's just something to maybe just to bear in mind you know if your speakers are really loud and right next to it or whatever you know, the, the vibrations and that the speakers are giving off um yeah i'm just um making sure i ain't missed anything out there i think it's um yeah it's pretty much um covered that i think and all yeah so if we go over the belt drive now uh, this is going to have a slower start up speed the belt you know it's, it's going to take a little bit longer to uh, right, start up it's going to be a little bit more ac less accurate speed wise i mean it's still going to be fine you know what i mean it's only going to start wobbling about all over the place but it's going to be a little bit less accurate because obviously that belt stretches and and whatever and if you can imagine it depends where the motor is but if the motor's stuck in one of the corners here say underneath or on top that could be anywhere the motor and the belt is pulling over that direction obviously it's going to pull that that platter's got a tendency to be pulled over in that direction with the uh, you know with a belt pulling it over so to speak. So you know it's kind of going that way a little bit. So that would be a slight against it. And obviously the belt, the ball bearings or anything that's like got the platter suspended on uh, would be kind of be pushing over there, so prone to wear on that side. Uh, but these ball bearings should go round as they go around as well. But I'm just saying, you know, obviously you've got that slight pull over to that side. Uh, the, the advantages is like say that belt will dampen things like it's not directly connected so if the motor's vibrating a little bit or getting any very small vibrations by the time it actually reaches the platter you know where it's spinning around connecting to the platter underneath or, or even on the side depending like which record player that belt should like cushion like that you know as a rubber belt it should act as a as a cushion there and um, get rid of some of that you know that wobbly effect or whatever um and that's it really like obviously the belt can stretch over time and these replacing where the motors you know the direct drive should be perfect obviously the direct drive the, the grease and that and the ball bearings and that can start drying up a bit over a long period of time so it's just something else to bear in mind but obviously the platter can anyway any anything with ball bearings can can do that but obviously the, the belt can stretch uh and will be replacing uh over time so that's covered that hopefully so um yeah I'm, uh, I've got two belt drive ones and it's really your choice there, you know, depending, obviously read some more reviews and bits and pieces. I don't think you're going to go wrong with either, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, I don't know, but it seems a bit of a fuss. You've got to keep replacing the belt, keeping an eye on the speed and that. But my belt, you know, like I say, the one I've had downstairs for quite a while now, I'm, I'm happy with that. But then again, obviously your choice, I'm just giving some, you know, positives and maybe negatives about either. Now, now arms now, now this arms business, is you've got three choices really you've got the dead straight one like i've got here dead straight arm you've got a linear arm which actually you know it comes down the back here it was on them i mean, remember remember years ago sharp used to like be like on their vertical record player unit the uh, dead straight arm maybe a bit of a gimmick but whatever but yeah so you do get some others that are dead straight arm technique sharp it's quite it's tons of match sony tons of manufacturers make them um I don't know about these days, but they did then. I'm not too sure how popular they are these days, to be honest. I should have looked at that. But uh, yes, it did. did, you know, just for as it did straight from the back. You've got your straight arm and you've got your S arm, you know, S kind of shaped arm. Which is the better? Well, I've been looking, I've, I haven't really got a preference myself. And I've been looking on the internet as well, thinking like, and there's so many arguments for it, you know, it really is. And they're all scientific and they're a bit beyond me, to be honest with you. So 
I'm really going to leave it up to you to decide. But I personally don't think for what we're looking at and our price range, our bracket at the moment, maybe if you go really high money, but at the moment, I think it doesn't matter which one you get. Like, you know what I mean? As long as it sounds okay, I think you're going to be fine to you. You know, it's going to be up to your preference, what you like, what goes with your system, maybe. Have you got a, a system that would like, you know, an S-shaped arm would look nice in, uh, a straight arm, you know, depending, it kind of matches your system, so to speak, or your preference. I mean, you may remember years ago, these old big, like, music centres they used to have, and most of them used to have the S-shaped arm, so if you kind of, you know, got that nostalgia bit, you may fancy an S-shape. I mean, the one I've got downstairs is an S-shape, this is a straight. It doesn't really bother me at all, like, really, to be honest with you, but I, 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 mean, I've got, I do like the S-shaped ones, I must admit, you know, it's just got that little bit of a character to it, I suppose. So that's that. Another thing to bear in mind is with these is, um, like I say, I bought this pretty cheap. Now, this, this edge shell doesn't come off. It's, it's non-removable. It's kind of attached, the edge shell. Now, it's up to you. You can get ones where the edge shell uh, unscrew. Or you've got an edge shell, but don't unscrew. The actual cartridge will still come out. You know, two little screws, and the cartridge will still come out on the edge shell. But you get some kind of got a nut there, like a, a, an undoing thing. Um, and you can take the edge shell completely off. Then you could take the cartridge out and put another cartridge in there if you show so wish. Or some people buy a separate edge shell, so you may have this one for certain records and you may swap it over for um, a cheaper cartridge in this one and plonk it on there, you know, swap over edge shells for a record that's got like loads of crackles and pops and you don't want to ruin the stylus on this one. So you've got um, a few things to consider there. Um, yeah, like I say, this one's pretty much fixed and um, I, I think you may be able to get a different cartridge in there, but um, it's more hassle than it's worth, so I'm happy enough for what it is anyway. So that's that. So now you're going to, we're going to go over to automatic, <coughs> manual, semi-automatic. A few preferences there. So how you actually want to play your record. Do you want to like have it full, you know, press a button and it's going to do everything for you. It's going to land on the record. It's going to go across. It's going to whip up and it's going to come back. Job done. Or do you just don't mind just turning it on and like lifting the record up as you would with a cue in and the thing comes up and then, then it go over and let it go down. Then you can walk away. And it, at the end, it'll bring itself back, so semi-automatic. Or do you want it fully manual, where you're going to have to do every single step yourself? So it's your choice. I, I don't think I've got any automatic. Well, I only have got two. Um, both of mine are semi-automatic, so I've got hundreds. I've only got two, and both of mine are semi-automatic, where I, I put the record on, and then it, it'll sort itself out and come back over. So then again, it's obviously your choice there or what. Uh, we're going to go on to now the leads at the back. Now, some of these leads are fixed. And some of them you've got the phono sockets yourself that you can buy your own lead. So you've got advantages and disadvantages. Like I say, if you're buying, maybe creeping up in value, you may want one that you can put your own lead. So you've got your own lead, you can buy an you know, expensive lead if you feel so. But for what we're doing here, it doesn't really matter. I don't think if it actually goes in you know, directly into the record player or not. If it goes directly in and you've got a solid contact, the only downside of that would be if anything happens to the you know, you lead at the other end, uh, one of them got crumpled or broken or whatever. If I've got a lead here, like for this for instance, like say one of these got broken or he's trod on it or something, then it's attached to the record player, then you're going to have to sort it out yourself, where if you um, if you had one which just plugged in separately, you could just go and get another lead. So, slight disadvantage, but what's the chances of you walking over it? I would have thought pretty, uh, pretty remote. Um, whether you should have a strobe, on your plat area, would you have a strobe? I mean, it's entirely up to you. I quite like, you know, it's a minimalistic look here. Uh, but some people like the strobe and they can see it's spot on. You know, the record's spinning around spot on, like watching them stay dead straight with a little, usually a red LED uh, firing at it. You know, it's, it's your choice, your looks, how uh, you feel like you with me with that. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to new or second hand, which is better. Well, there's quite a big argument about this as well, I think. With new, you got you got your, you got your positives here. With new, you got your positives here that it's brand new. You've got a new stylus, new cartridge, new belt if it's a belt one or if it's track drive. Everything's new, brand new motor. Nothing's going to wear out. Well, it shouldn't wear out long enough. It's a decent made one. It should last quite a while. So that's with new. Um, let's have a look. Just having a look here. Yeah, if you know, buying a turntable, I mean, I'm not an expert, I don't go running out buying turntables every five minutes, but, you know, try and get a weighty one, something's got a bit of weight to it, and you find these new ones, a lot of these new ones are very plasticky, the plastic's thinner, quite lightweight, compared to, like, a second-hand one, or a good, good new one, where, you know, you want a bit of weight, because, you know, and, and the feet, you want quite a bit of dampening, you want to, you know, so it's there, it's solid, it ain't going to move about, any vibrations ain't going to get onto the, uh, into the deck and into the plateau and start moving things about, 
So, you know, the heavier the better, generally speaking. Uh, don't put a brick in it, but you know what I mean? It's any, anything heavier the better, you know, and, and quality-wise. You want something quite rigid. You don't want it all flopping about everywhere, like, you know what I mean? It's sounds fairly rigid. And like I say, these new ones, these cheap new ones, what I call the cheap new ones, is about $100, £100 thereabouts. If, you know, ones I've seen, they're quite plasticky. The arm's quite plastic. It's, it's, it's quite plasticky, like you would be. So maybe if you're going to get a new one, spend up a bit for it, spend up a bit. But if you're going to get a second-hand one, hopefully you're going to get a bargain, you're going to get something quite cheap, you know, you know, relatively speaking, you can have a saint well made. Uh, try and pick it up locally rather than not. Not many people like sending them off because, as you can imagine, this all wobbles about. The decks, you know, the platters flying up and down, and it's, uh, uh, you know, this could come undone. It may add one, not me, but uh, where the tone arm was in there over, over here on the way, even though it was clamped down, God knows how it got over there, but it did. So, a lot of people like pick up only. So, you know, you know, you're in that market and you should get it quite a bit cheaper and you can see what you're buying. Uh, just a few things, obviously. Being old, like I say, the grease could have dried up in the ball bearings, like the grease and that, been over, over a period of years or whatever. So make sure this this platter turns nice and freely. You know what I mean? Not having too much trouble. Try and get a demonstration if you can. Um, yeah, you may need a new. See, it's the cost effective here. Just bear in mind what you're paying. Don't pay top money and think it's all going to be lovely and away we go. Because if it's a belt driven one, you may need a new belt, so that's a little bit more of an expense. And also stylus been in there. You know what I mean? You may need a new stylus. Things like that, general appearance. Obviously, with brand, new, you've got to get in pristine, brand new condition, uh, mint, so to speak. Uh, with a second hand one, you may get a few knocks, marks, and whatever uh, to be expected, probably for how old some of them can be. So, your choice again. I think I would prefer value wise and that for myself uh, to have a second hand one. I think you know, what I mean, make sure it's you know, it's all it's all going properly and it all feels okay. Another thing with a second hand one, just would quickly mention it, is this dampening, this queuing here, this little thing that brings the arm up and down. That's usually got fluid in it. Same with the grease that can seize up. That fluid can seize up as well. So just bear in mind, you know, try it out and hopefully that should go down nice and smoothly, constant and you're like, not got to wait for it or help it out. You know what I mean? So you should be all right with that. But just, you know, that can, that can seize up. And some of them you can get to and some, you know, to, to re-top up. But it's all aggro and some of them are nightmare. So yeah, try and get it so... It works first time, so to speak. So yeah, really, that's it. Like I say, second hand ones, you could have, like I say, ball bearings, wear, motor wear, and all that kind of thing. So you kind of got to balance it up and make sure you don't pay over the top for it. Uh, you know, it'd be disappointing thinking, you know, you've got a really good one and you pay top money for it and bits and pieces need doing to it and it ends up costing you twice as much. Okay, that's it really. I hope um, that's been some kind of beneficial to some people. Uh, I will come back with a review of this. Like I say, it was only a cheap one, but it, it does the job. It sounds okay, it sounds good. So we'll come back and review for that. This channel, like I say, is about a bit about everything really. So I'll never know what I'm gonna put up next. Anything that I think you may be interested, so it could be a bit random. Um, so yeah, if, if you like what you see, hopefully subscribe and uh, give a thumbs up. That really helps the channel out and, and gets me going again to plonk something else up here. Okay, until next time, I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.